Hello all and welcome to Checksum, a new weekly video series from Gestalt IT. We're hoping that Checksum can provide a bite-sized video to help you verify the integrity of the larger IT news out there. Let's hit that graphic. It's been a hot minute now since the news broke that NVIDIA intended to buy Mellanox. Actually, it's been about 587,000 minutes or so since we heard it, having been initially announced well over a year ago. I'm always super careful when writing posts announcing these kinds of acquisitions because, let's face it, a company can announce acquisitions all they want. It doesn't mean they're actually going to happen. Just as Xerox. Or Broadcom. Or Qualcomm. But it looks like NVIDIA had one thing that was seemingly in short supply for a lot of tech companies looking to make acquisitions in the past year or so. Approval from Chinese regulators. With that last hurdle out of the way, the company finalized the acquisition in a deal worth just under $7 billion. This is by far the biggest acquisition for NVIDIA, although in the grand scheme of tech acquisitions, it's probably closer to a mid-sized deal these days. Which isn't to say that it isn't an important move by the company. In fact, I think it's the key for the company's next stage of development. And it's been an interesting trajectory for the company. From their founding in the 90s to the mid-2000s, they were an innovative graphics card manufacturer, trading spots with companies like ATI, now part of AMD, for the top performing consumer graphics cards. But in 2006, there was a major change for the company. That year, the company introduced CUDA, the first commercial solution for general purpose GPU computing. This came out of the research from Ian Buck, who originally developed Brook, the extension of the C programming language with data parallelism in 2003. However, much of that potential of CUDA in 2006 was just that, more than an idea than actual execution. It didn't help that the G80-based cars that were the first to support CUDA were also screaming fast GPUs at the time, and let's face it, most gamers don't really care about general purpose computing as long as those frame rates stay high. Most of the CUDA tech demos around that time were about speeding transcoding and image processing. Certainly important, but not groundbreaking yet for NVIDIA. That changed in 2009 when the Google Brain team used NVIDIA GPUs to create neural networks and found speeds 100 times faster compared to using CPUs. Development of deep learning on GPUs allowed for the creation of the AlexNet neural network in 2012 that topped the ImageNet image recognition challenge by a huge margin using GPUs to train its ML model. Suddenly, NVIDIA was on the hardware forefront of the ML and AI revolutions virtually without competition. Yeah, OpenCL provided an interesting option for general purpose GPU computing in heterogeneous environments and certainly had industry adoption across a number of vendors but didn't perform as well on NVIDIA hardware, gee, I wonder why, and didn't see consistent adoption, more importantly, in deep learning frameworks. Especially in those early days when models needed to eke out as much performance as possible, that was enough to make CUDA and NVIDIA hardware a de facto standard. Now the company is building GPUs just for that use case, no longer just including CUDA cores and GPUs, first with Volta designs, and now trickling into their consumer cards with the RTX line, the company is putting specialized tensor cores to aid in ML workloads. So if AI and ML are so important for NVIDIA, why does this Mellanox deal make any sense? Well, one big reason is that it significantly diversifies the company. While NVIDIA is riding high in the current GPU accelerated ML wave, I think they see this as a temporary summit rather than the new normal. FPGAs and ASICs will soon start eating into NVIDIA's market share here if they haven't already. And while I don't see the GPU market for ML applications going away anytime soon, those chips will certainly eat into the ability to grow that market. And of course, don't forget about the bust of the crypto boom, which saw GPUs go from the hottest commodity on earth to eBay listings faster than you can say blockchain. So Mellanox at the very least gives NVIDIA a much wider portfolio. But more importantly than that, NVIDIA is getting a business at the heart of the next battle for the data center, interconnects. With Moore's law seemingly coming to an end, or at least significantly slowing on the x86 side, data centers will increasingly need to turn to accelerators to offload compute for more specialized performance. NVIDIA is no slouch in the interconnect space already, with their NV switch letting them connect 16 GPUs using shared memory in a single server. But with Mellanox's InfiniBand interconnect, NVIDIA can now build systems that further connect multiple servers using NV switches together for some truly monumental compute. Of course, NVIDIA has kind of done this already in the supercomputing space before the acquisition of Mellanox. So why buy the company? 
Well, for one, it allows them to more tightly integrate this kind of super fast, low latency interconnect even tighter, and further innovate in the HPC space outside of supercomputers. But another good reason was that Microsoft and Xilinx were also reportedly interested in Mellanox. And while an independent Mellanox is a fine partner to license InfiniBand backends from, it's quite another thing if Xilinx bought the company and started offering the same thing to their extensive FPGA lineup, perhaps exclusively. Does this mean I think that the acquisition is a slam dunk for NVIDIA? Not quite. While they're well positioned to capitalize on the decline of the x86 market, buying Mellanox effectively hitches them on the Infina bandwagon. See what I did there? While it's not inherently a bad position to be in, it is an opinionated one. And while it has good market penetration now, we're already seeing other interconnects, even something as simple as PCI Express, potentially disrupting this. But at the end of the day, NVIDIA is in a much better position with Mellanox in the fold there was an extra $7 billion sitting in their bank account. Hey, thanks for watching this first episode of Checksum. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Gestalt IT YouTube channel to get even more great videos in your feed every week. And hey, let us know what you think about the Mellanox acquisition in the comments. Did waiting a year on the acquisition help or hurt either party? And how important do you see it for NVIDIA's long-term future? Can't wait to hear from you. See you next week.